This video will discuss fires and industrial explosions. We will look at an overview of fires, then a case study involving a fire, an overview of explosions, then a case study involving an explosion, an overview of dust explosions, and a case study involving a dust explosion. First we'll begin with fire. The fire triangle is used to demonstrate the three causes that are necessary to result in a fire. In this case, the effect of fire is caused by heat and fuel and an oxidizing agent. In recent years, the fire triangle has been replaced with the fire tetrahedron, which is a more accurate representation of what is required to create a fire. Along with fuel, heat, and an oxidizing agent, the fire tetrahedron adds a chain reaction as a cause of the fire. However, the chain reaction isn't just added into the list. Rather, heat, fuel, and oxidizing agent are required to create an uninhibited chain reaction which results in fire. There are various different ways that extinguishing methods are used to prevent or stop a fire. Water fire extinguishers act on the heat. The water from the fire extinguisher cools the heat by reducing the heat. It stops the uninhibited chain reaction and stops the fire. Carbon dioxide fire extinguisher starves the oxygen supply by removing the oxidizing agent. It stops the uninhibited chain reaction and stops the fire. Halon and dry chemical fire extinguishers actually interfere with the chemical reaction and by interfering with that chemical reaction stop the fire from occurring. The case study related to fires is that of the Cook County Administration Building. There was a fire in this building on October 17, 2003 at the very end of the day that people were trapped in the stairway and this did tragically result in the deaths of six people in Chicago. Our safety goal is impacted because six people were killed. Those people were killed by smoke inhalation because they were trapped in a stairway and because the stairway was filled with toxic gases. The people were trapped in the stairway because they were told to evacuate via all stairs and firefighters were blocking the stairs at the 12th floor because of an uncontrolled fire that was burning on the 12th floor. The stairway doors from the 12th through the 27th floor were locked so anyone who was exiting the building above the 12th floor using this particular stairway was not able to get back out until the 27th floor. The stairway was filled with toxic gases because smoke was released into the stairway due to again the uncontrolled fire on the 12th floor and because the smoke tower system which would have removed smoke from the stairway was inoperable. When we are looking at solutions to this issue, a solution of trying to prevent fires is something that we certainly should strive for, but especially in high-rise buildings, depending on fires not happening to ensure the safety of our people is insufficient. So we need to look at some solutions that are not only going to reduce the risk of a fire, but are going to increase the safety of our personnel in case of a fire. In this case, some of the solutions including reviewing and updating the evacuation plan to provide clear plans to employees to leave the building, installing automatic sprinklers to try and ensure that fires could be more easily controlled, installing fail-safe doors that would unlock in an emergency. This would have allowed personnel to leave off of the 13th floor and use a different stairway rather than having to return all the way to the 28th floor and of course repairing the inoperable smoke tower system. Now we'll move on to chemical explosions. Chemical explosions, which is one of the common types of industrial explosions, result from a rapid uninhibited chain reaction. That uninhibited chain reaction is caused by an ignition source or heat, fuel, an oxidizing agent, and confinement. If you remember what we looked at for the fire triangle, this heat source, fuel, and oxidizing agent are what makes up the fire triangle. And in fact, a chemical explosion is just a rapid similar chain reaction to that of a fire. So if you have all of these elements confined, you end up having that reaction be so rapid that it results in a chemical explosion instead of a fire.
Our case study for a chemical explosion is TWA Flight 800, which exploded and broke up in air on July 17, 1996 at 8.31 p.m. The flight was delayed for several hours and did explode off offshore of New York. Everyone on board was killed. The plane was destroyed. At the date that this had occurred, there had been four fuel tank explosions in the past 16 years. Our safety goal is impacted because of the 230 people that were killed. Our property goal impact is impacted due to the loss of the plane. Both of these goal impacts resulted from a fuel tank exploding in midair. That fuel tank exploded because of a rapid, uninhibited chain reaction. And as we discussed before, in order for that to occur, we need a heat source. In this case, it was found to be arcing from bare wires. We need a fuel source. In this case, the fuel air mix, which had an increased flammability due to its increased temperature. That increased temperature was because the air conditioning had been running on the flight while it was on the ground for two and a half hours. Oxygen is required. There was oxygen in the air of that fuel air mix. The reason that oxygen was present was because an inerting process which would remove oxygen from the air within the tank was not used. And the fuel, oxygen, and heat source were all confined within a fuel tank. Some of the solutions that were recommended after the explosion of Flight 800 to reduce the risk of this occurring were to use an alternate wire coating that would reduce the risk of wires becoming uncovered, to use ground equipment when air condition or other power sources were needed when the plane was on the ground, recommendation was made to use an inerting process within the fuel tanks. Now we'll move on to dust explosions. There is a pentagon that shows us what makes up a dust explosion. It's fuel and ignition source, dispersion, oxygen, and confinement. Now if you look at this carefully, you'll notice that these are the four causes that resulted in an explosion, which of course makes sense because we are looking at an explosion here. However, in order for an explosion to be a dust explosion, we also need dispersion of the dust. In cause mapping form, this looks like this. Our effect is a dust explosion, and in order for it to occur, we need, as with any explosion, a rapid uninhibited chain reaction. In this case, that's caused by heat or an ignition source, fuel, oxygen, confinement, so these are the causes of our explosion, and dispersion, which is also, requ which is also required when we are looking at dust explosions. For example for our Dust explosion is the explosion of a sugar refinery in Georgia in 2008. There was a dust explosion and a subsequent fire in the evening of February 7th. The work that was being done was transporting sugar on a conveyor enclosed with steel panels. There were 14 people killed and 36 injured and there was severe damage to the plant. There had been four sugar dust explosions since the 1960s when this explosion occurred. Safety goal is impacted because of the people that are killed and injured. The property goal is impacted because of the severe damage to the plant. Both of these occurred as a result of the sugar dust explosion. That explosion occurred as a result of a rapid, uninhibited chain reaction, and that chain reaction was caused by an ignition source, which is unknown, fuel, which in this case was sugar dust, dispersion of the sugar dust, and the presence of the sugar dust as well as the dispersion were determined to have been caused by a lack of housekeeping at the site. There was oxygen within the air and the conveyor enclosed with steel panels which had been done for cleanliness for the food product was determined to be the source of the confinement of all of these items that led to the explosion. Some of the solutions that were recommended and implemented as a result of this incident were to remove all ignition sources from the enclosed area, to ensure that an improved housekeeping process was in place to reduce the presence and dispersion of sugar dust. One of the recommendations associated with that was dust collectors. Also inspections to ensure that that housekeeping process was improved was also recommended. Another potential solution was to use an inerting system within that enclosed area or to leave the walls open on the conveyor so that cleanliness would still be provided from the top but it would not provide a confined area. 
I hope you enjoyed this discussion of fires and industrial explosions and I invite you to visit our website at www.thinkreliability.com to discover more case studies and more examples of how Cosmapping can assist you in your job.